Brad Johnson here from Johnson.audio, and today we are going to discuss analog recording versus digital recording. And in this video, we are gonna cover the new marketing hoopla around analog, analog warmth, and really, what does it all mean for us as songwriters trying to make great music from home? Do we need it? Is it something that we need to consider? I kind of had this idea after doing a bunch of shootouts on different types of popular analog processors that are being modeled by software companies such as Universal Audio, Waves, Slate Digital, and then also Logic just came out with a new update where they have their new tube equalizers, they have their Neve 1073 emulation, um, and their API graphics EQ emulation. And really, I just kind of want to start discussing um, really this digital this digital analog debate because um, if you're like me, I mean, my very first mix I ever tried to do was on a console and an ADAT machine, but that was so long ago, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but really, when I really started to take recording seriously, it was a lot like most of us with a, a simple interface, like an M-Audio, M-Box, and then I had a really, really basic version of Pro Tools and a laptop, and that was really how I started to develop my recording chops. And you know, some of us might have grown up in the analog era and we really understand this idea of signal flow and really working with voltage, current, all that kind of stuff, instead of now being in the box, dealing with you know binary and ones and zeros and what all that really means for our recordings. And so I think in this day and age with so much of our work going into the computer, it's really easy to kind of forget what exactly it is that we're doing when we're recording music and making stuff come out of the speakers because we get so enamored by, I think, you know, the face plates of all these different types of analog, you know, plugins that we just start, we, we really forget what's going on behind the scenes or underneath the hood, so to speak. Um, because, I mean, I got this idea because I've been building uh, my own analog gear for a little bit now. And you really start to see, you know, it's like, it's just, you're really at the end of the day with recording, you're just controlling electrical current and voltage. You're basically making sure that you manipulate it in a way that when it comes out of the speakers, it sounds good. You know, and it's really, I mean, if you think about it, like that is signal flow is, you know, sound enters into a microphone, it's turned into an electrical current and it gets sent down the cable into a preamp and so forth. And eventually it will go through your converters and turn into a digital signal. But essentially your hard drive is then trying to route and clock and do all this stuff with the digital signal and, you know, really, what does it all mean? Like when we talk about analog warmth and this analog and we're trying to move more towards, you know, that characteristic and really it's just trying to, you know, trying to manipulate the digital signal to actually have some imperfections and some nonlinearities and to create some kind of, you know, almost distortion into the signal so it feels more natural because our ears are acclimated to, you know, these nonlinearities. In our day-to-day -day life, we are hearing, you know, slight distortion. We're hearing all these different things that aren't a perfectly clean signal. So a very perfectly clean signal, it sounds a little natural to us actually. And, you know, I hate to say it, but our ears work in analog, you know? And so we are, we're used to those things. And that's what we're trying to capture when it comes to this analog recording, digital recording kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, do we really have to get wrapped up in all the marketing hoopla. It's like, well, not really. Really, you just have to understand that a little bit of grit, a little bit of distortion. You know, obviously, there's certain models that are like the golden units of the day and age, like an 1176, LA2A, the knees, the APIs, and they have that kind of characteristic and sound to um, those units that we might have gotten used to just by listening to records over the years. But really, when it comes to analog, what we're searching for is just nonlinearities. We're looking for maybe that, just that, that little bit of distortion. You know, maybe like a transformer adding in a little bit more of that. You know, mid range where it just kind of just you know blooms a little bit more, and it's just not as sterile. And if you haven't worked with any analog gear, you will notice that there is just a roundness and kind of just that character that is added to it when you run a signal through circuitry. It's just what happens because naturally it's not gonna come out one end and the other end totally clean. It's gonna have stuff imparted to the signal just because of the nature of the components that it's going through. And we kind of lose that a little bit in the digital world. And so we're trying to actually, you know, bring that back into the digital world through all these different kinds of emulations. Um, I think that with digital emulations, they're doing a really, really good job. I personally, like I said, grew up in the digital age. So like 
I was used to having really clean recordings. And as I've moved into being able to work in some studios that have analog gear and being able to kind of work through some of the analog gear that I'm building, you definitely do notice that there is that, it's kind of this thing about it. And Vance Powell, an engineer, mixer, very famous, works with a lot of rock bands, says that, you know, God lives in the analog. It's kind of like, you can't, it kind of just does something to it. Like, because it's in real time, going through real circuitry, it's in like actual physical universe, something just kind of happens to it. And it just, the signal just, it's just different than when you run it through, you know, the algorithm where they're doing a really good job of keeping, you know, getting those nonlinearities into the signal, but, you know, it's still an algorithm and it's going to kind of be predictable and do the same thing that it's supposed to do because it's programmed. And with analog gear, it's just kind of like the weather's different, you know, it's just a different day. It just wants to do something kind of different, you know I mean? It's, it just has kind of a life of its own. And I'm not trying to say, you know, you have to go all analog. It's just understanding that sometimes when it comes to gear and it comes to that stuff, you look at it as another musical instrument and it imparts a tone on something that you're doing and it can really just, you know, enhance and kind of give you that, that inspiration. You know, I, I don't know, just like singing through an actual compressor and hearing what it's doing to my vocals sometimes makes me feel a little bit more inspired and just like, oh man, like I, I, I never knew my voice could sound that way. And I really love the way this is coloring my vocals. And we can do that within the box and it's just kind of a different workflow. And so, I mean, really digital's come a long way, but we really have to understand that recording is just controlling voltage and current. And then manipulating it through filters and through different kinds of gain staging and compression and all this stuff and then tape and all that back in the day. And that was what was making sound come out of your speakers and we enjoyed it and it just sounded great. And that's essentially what we're doing in the box as well as just controlling different, you know, samples and whatever it is. And we have to just understand that we're still controlling the current of it all. But because it's in the computer, it's not going to have all those nonlinearities of running through all the different kinds of, you know, um, hardware or units. It's just, we kind of have to recreate that within the digital environment through saturation and all these tape plugins and, you know, analog gear. But the thing that we do have to be careful with in the box is that because all of those emulations are an algorithm and there are somewhat predictable, we can't just place them on every single track because then we're going to be adding those nonlinearities on all the tracks and it's going to build up and it's actually going to create a problem in your mix. So you have to be very, you know, strategic when it comes to your different emulations. And maybe that's why you have different, the same plugin by different manufacturers because they are going to be a different algorithm. And so you can kind of think of it as two different units. And sometimes we don't want to add that analog character. Sometimes having a really clean signal is exactly what you need. Um, just know though that, you know, if everything is super clean, it's, it does feel kind of sterile, at least in my opinion. I love a little bit of grit. I love a little bit of that saturation. I'm kind of speaking a little bit, um, like kind of going overboard on this, but I really want to just kind of touch on this analog recording versus digital recording debate. Um, I know a lot of people that would really argue that you should be tracking in analog and then you can do all your mixing and stuff in the digital world because when you track through analog, you're getting all those that nice characteristic and then you have the flexibility of just being able to work in the computer later that could be a workflow that you work towards and that you start investing in really good front end gear for your recordings and tracking and then you just do everything else within the box because you've already kind of created that character in the signal itself and so i don't know i would love to know your guys' thoughts leave me a comment below um, if you are working strictly in the box, if you only want to work in the box, or if you've been thinking about moving into having a little bit more of an analog rig, or maybe you started with analog and now you love the flexibility of digital and you're doing, you know, maybe a hybrid situation. I just love to know you guys' setup. Um, if you got anything out of this and felt inspired, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't feel free to give me a thumbs down. I can handle it. I am a big boy. And, um, yeah. So again, my name is Brad Johnson. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button to all my other subscribers. I appreciate your continued support. I'm here because I am just excited and thrilled to try to share this passion of music with you and we can learn together. I will see you in the next video. Bye.